Hello everybody, this is Rita Holmes, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! from Ohio. I'm here to bring you a technique today and I hope that you enjoy it. Um, I don't have a lot, a lot to say today except for um, as far as Stampin' Up! is concerned. I do want to tell you that I would love to, if you are thinking about buying Stampin' Up! you do not have a demonstrator, just let me know. I would love to be that demonstrator for you, or if you would like to join um, Stampin' Up, please give me a shout out. I'd love to talk to you about that. Uh, there's so many things you can do, um, not with having to have it a business, but being a hobbyist or whatever you want to do. I'd love to talk to you about that and have you join my team. And I wanted to get that out there, and I'm looking to the side because I am... Um, let me try and have this paper I want to show you. Before I get started with my technique, though, I'm going to tell you about my class to go that I have. Um, I hope this is on mute. I'm putting up on my iPad so when we get to the um, technique, I can see that I'm in focus, you know, with my hands. But anyway, I have a class to go that's going on that I need. The deadline is October 17th. And um, it would be ready for me to ship out on the 28th. Um, there's different options to it. I will show you it's with the Fond of Autumn. You'd be making eight cards, two of each designs. I have three different ways you can buy it. Um, the supplies you get with the price is all the card stack, stock cut to sizes, any die cuts or punched items for your cards, as long as they don't have to be stamped specifically because I can't stamp them for you and cut them out. Enough embellishments and ribbon for your cards, more than enough regular size dimensionals. Option one has all of those supplies plus the PDFs to make the card and the stamp bundle, which um, brings the total cost, including shipping, is $86 because the bundle itself is 50 something dollars. And the card kit only, if you just want the supplies, you know, all the paper cut to, to make your cards, say you've already got the stamp set or whatever, um, you can get all of the stuff cut that I told mentioned to you in the beginning, plus the PDFs for $34, and that's shipped. Um, I do offer porch pickup, which would be $25 um, if you live in the area where I live, then you'd be able to do that. Um, option three is the PDFs only. I do not put those out on my, um, page on Facebook for free because I do have people paying for, to do the cards. So those are $15 for the four PDFs. So that is the way of doing it. When I turn my thing down, I will show you those cards first off, and then we will see the, um, technique that we're going to do, and we'll, we'll jump right into that, Okay. So let's turn the phone up. If you're dizzy, shut your eyes. You'll see my ceiling for a minute. I'm glad it's never dirty. That wouldn't be fun. Now let me see if I can bring this down just a little bit. Just to keep you in focus. There we go. I think that's good. Let's see how that looks there. I know you can't read that, but anyway, my my um, I put this as a fun fold series. Okay, it's a baby wipe technique. Um, I think I forgot to change the heading. It is not a fun fold, but anyway, it's a faux baby wipe technique, and here it is. We will be making this card and then a card in green. We're going to do the same cards. We're going to do them in the yellow and then in a the green. And this is the faux baby wipe technique. It looks kind of like what you do with baby wipes, but we're not going to use baby wipes. We're going to use finger daubers. And then I stamp the inside. Same way, I put two different ribbons on it. This one, I put some embellishments on it, and this one I did not. I just realized I forgot to pause my phone so let's see if I can do it from here I hope that it at least turns it off I don't know 
But anyway, we hope that that's okay. Here's what I used for my card. This is what we're going to make our background paper with. It's one of our decorative masks that comes in a package with three or four of them. We are going to use um, several inks. We're going to use the Fond of Autumn stamp set. And then I am going to use out of the Forever Fern this little splatter stamp because that's how I got the little splatters on here. Looks like splatters. It's not actually, but that's okay. But we're going to be using this stamp set. This is really, really easy, so I want to... Um, show you that but before I do that I told you I was going to show you my class to go cards and these are the four cards you would get the stuff to make two of each here's the first one here's the second one let's turn that over here's the third and then here is the fourth Okay, so that is my cards, and I just wanted to have that out there for you. So now, let me move my finger daubers out of the way. We'll bring in our cards that we're going to be making. We're first going to have our two card bases, which is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and or folded and scored at four and a quarter, I should say. should say that right. And I'm just going to set them to the side for a minute. Because we're not going to use them right this minute. So we have our two card bases there. We have two... I'm, this is for two cards. This is three by... I've already forgotten. Three by four. And then this is three and an eighth by four and an eighth. So that is old olive. And then this is five and a quarter by four. So this is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And I know people don't like those eighth inch measurements, but I didn't want a lot of the colored cardstock showing. So that's that's how we did that, okay? I need to get out a piece of scrap paper real quick. Quick. In fact, let me, this side's kind of messy. I'll just turn it over this way. It doesn't matter. I'll use this side. Get my little stuff out here. Set my cards to the side. Put these out here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to line it up. I kind of use some grid marks just to make sure I'm straight so that I line this up straight on here. Like so. And then I just kind of hold that down like that. I'm going to bring in a blending brush with crushed curry ink. Because that is what we're going to be using. So here we go. We're going to ink this up. I'm just going to dab it off and I'm going to start here in this corner. And I'm just going to, that got really dark in that corner too. Didn't mean that, but that's okay. Because all I'm going to do is blend this out some. I'm not going to re-ink it or anything. It's just going to be Okay, there is the yellow, and you can see that I just kind of let it blend out towards the top. Then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the pieces of my 3x4, and I'm basically just going to rub over this. It'll put a little hue of yellow on there, but you'll still see a lot of the white. just kind of gives it a little yellow glare. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to set it up there. I'll bring in the next one. And I got that one a little bit crooked anyway. After I said I wasn't going to, I did. But once we get it decorated, it'll be okay. So now I'm going to bring this in. I 
Okay, now I'm going to get my green. And it's old olive that we're going to be using this time. So we're going to open that up. I'm going to bring in my green blending brush. I look at kind of out of focus there. I hope it clears up. I wasn't paying attention. Eh, yeah. When I move, look how out of focus that looks. It's crazy. I'm going to ink this up. Kind of gets the bulk of it off. Then I'm going to start. We'll bring this up. There's our green. Put that to the side. And well, I had a phone interruption there. I'm sorry. I knew if I didn't turn that off and I forgot all about it. But that's okay. We're going to continue on. I just declined the phone call and they can leave a message. So I added a little bit of green onto this piece. I'll put it with my green piece. So that pretty should have pretty well cleaned my brushes out. Right? We don't need those anymore. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up, along with these two, we have crushed curry. We're going to have um, pumpkin pie. I don't want to put the pumpkin pie and the crushed curry next to each other. And we have rich razzleberry. That is going to be the color of our leaf and we're going to bring in I'm going to put the yellow to my left and the green to my right and that's what we're going to do we're going to also use finger divers so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my colors out here's my old olive here's my pumpkin pie here's my rich razzleberry oh pumpkin pie goes over here and here is crushed, nope, crushed curry is, so anyway, I am going to ink this up with the crushed curry. So I've inked my stamp up, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my green, I'm going to use my finger dauber. And I'm going to do my stem. I want my stem to be green. So we will do that in the green. Okay. And then I am going to bring in my pumpkin pie. And I'm just going to pounce to get that done. Then I am going to add some rich razzleberry. I wanted to add some pumpkin pie down here. I forgot. Then what I'm going to do is add some green. And then I'll have fun it. I'll bring it to my cardstock and I'll press. I want that to really soak in to my cardstock. And there's my first leaf. Now I'm not going to clean my stamp. I'm just going to, for this next one, I'm just going to do the same thing that I just did. I ink that up. I'm going to add my green. I just had three phone calls in a row, and I always, always mute that, and it didn't. So I hope nobody doesn't want anything important, because I am just stamping away. Put 
add some green. I like some green on my leaves because they're still turning. We'll huff on this one. <sighs> and we're huffing it to make sure that we have, um, to make sure that we have um, some moisture on our stamps, okay? So there's the two we have. I'm gonna lay them to the side just for a second because I'm gonna bring my card bases in and I'm gonna stamp a leaf in there. Now I'm not gonna worry about the three seedlings down here. We just, because I mainly just do the leaf. So I'm just gonna ink that leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and add my green. Doesn't look like I added any down there, but I did. And I'll add some um, pumpkin pie. And then we'll add rich razzleberry. We'll huff on this again. <sighs> and then we'll do our leaf. And we will move that one over and we'll bring our next one in. Because we're doing two cards at one time. And the reason why I'm doing it is just to show you that you don't have, your leaves are not going to turn out exactly the same way every time, which I think that's quite a neat thing because then every card is unique. Oh, I decided I wasn't going to do that, didn't I? Let's take the yellow, the Razzleberry. This is such a pretty color on leaves. And then we'll add some green. Come back and add some green down in through there. Half on it. And put it down. Aren't those pretty? They make very pretty leaves. Okay, now we're done stamping that part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close these up. We're not going to need these for anymore. I'm going to bring in Early Espresso and Crumb Cake, I think, or Sahara Sand. I'm sorry, Sahara Sand. You can use Crumb Cake. I've done that before, but I got Sahara Sand out here, so we are going to do that. Let's put the daubers away because they'll fall on the cards and make ugly marks and we don't want that. Rich Razzleberry, Pumpkin Pie, Green, Crushed Curry. They're all in there. We'll shut that, put that over here. And now what I'm gonna do is bring in Early Espresso, and I'm gonna bring in, it's called the So Grateful Stamp. And I'm going to stamp that right here at the bottom where my leaves are. Oops, that one got a little messy, but I'll just clean that up here in a second. <clears throat> Actually, it really doesn't look too bad on there, but it's not supposed to be there, so... We'll mess with that in a second. Let's get our um, just put some splatters on here. It doesn't matter where you put them. And there we go. We have splatters. Do that very randomly. And the best way to do that is do it fast. Because if you do it fast then you don't think about it and you don't have want to get them so um um even you know because you're you're just hitting it so you're not saying oh i need to put it here i need to put it here we're going to bring our glue in we're going to glue these to the two pieces of 
the old olive. So let's just turn them both over at one time and add some glue. Stick these on. Okay, and while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and glue these together. We'll glue our green on our green. Well, they're both going on green. And we'll get our yellow and do the yellow. And we'll have them on their backgrounds so that they look good. The green really looks nice. I like the green. And I just wanted to showcase some of that and show you how it looked. And I like my darker corner down in my lower left for some reason. Don't ask me why. It's just something that I did. So, whoops. Went one way too far and then the other way too far. Let's start over. It's one thing I like about that glue. I can move it around. Till it starts really drying on me and then I have a hard time. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take and I'm going to go ahead and put dimensionals on each of these and put them on the front of the card. So let's get some of those out. I like easy cards. And if you've watched many of my videos, you'll know that. If you have not ever watched my videos, um, I ask you to hit the little bell for the subscribe button so you'll know when I'm coming on. I'd also like if you could give me a thumbs up and some comments. That really helps my channel and um, helps me grow, which that's my whole idea is growing and let people see the cards and ideas that I make. Okay, we're going to, I'm going to put this one right in the middle. Okay. There we go. And then this one. I did get that really kind of crooked, but the background, which will probably drive me crazy, but I'm going to put my card on here and do it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in Wink Estella. Now when you're doing this, because Wink Estella is wet, it'll blend your ink a little bit too. So you'll see that ink kind of blend out a little bit. And that's what, that makes it really neat with this technique too, is you can, especially if you've got light spots in there, if you just kind of move that around, it'll cover them up. Makes it nice. And then we're just going to ink all of this. And it makes it so pretty. I like Wink Estella. I don't use it a lot. Um, I like using it on stamps that are closed images and stuff. I think it makes them look a lot better. But anytime you want to highlight something, Wink Estella is the way to go. It's really pretty and... Okay, let's bring in our leaves in here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to have to squeeze this for a minute to get it running again. Whoa, I got it running that time, didn't I? He's going to be all winked up. That's this little bubble. What I'm going to do with that, because it is so, I'm going to lay this on top of it and put my hand on it, let it soak up some of that. It went out a little bit, but that's okay because I'll just blend some out, make it look like it's supposed to be that way, blend some of the color out around it. 
there's always a way to fix your mistakes. And just blend out some color around that. It'll make it look like it was in a shadow. So there we go. That one's inky. Inky, inky. And there we go. We're going to do this one. And I'm going to leave these open for a minute because I'm going to let them dry. While we're doing that, I'm going to take my linen thread and I'm going to just tie a little bow with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, and I'm going to do two. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off the edges or two pieces that I'm going to want extra. For my first bow, I'm just going to take I want two pieces and here's what I'm going to do. I don't know if you won't be able to see this on the camera, but I take both pieces and I run it and hold it and just run it down the side of my table and hold on to it. And it takes a lot of that curl out of that. If you can notice that, then I'm just going to take and I'm going to tie a bow. I'm actually not even going to use the other two pieces. I'm just going to tie it like this because that's faster. I'll keep those other two pieces for something else. So we're going to put one of those on here. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my ribbon and just give me two pieces. They're probably about nine inches long, maybe. I don't need a whole lot. I'll run it over the table and get this curl out of it. See the curl? I'm going to run that on my table edge. And you can do this with any kind of ribbon. Whoops, I hit that with my finger. And you can get see how straight it gets. It really helps when you're trying to tie a bow. That's all I'm going to say. Here, I like tying my bows. And I like for my ribbon not to be real curly when I do that because it just makes a mess. I'm going to trim this ribbon. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to get a glue dot. And I'm just going to roll that glue dot behind that linen thread that didn't stick. Where'd it go? It stayed there. What about that? There we go. Roll that right there. And I'll stick it right here on the card. And I'll do the same with this one. I'm going to bring that bow. There we go. Bring that down just a little bit. Whoops, wrong one. Pulled too much on one, not enough on the other. That's okay. They're bows. I'm going to stick that right there. And I take my thumb and I really push in that center to make sure that I have that um, really down onto the cardstock good. So let's bring our cards back in now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shut the card. Go ahead and use my what I call my bone folder, which is actually a Pampered Chef um, thing for your oh, stones, like a scraper. But I love it to fold my cards with, so that's what I use. And I've used it for probably 15 years at least to do that. Okay, there's that one. We'll bring this one in. We'll do the same. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put this on. And 
then if you'll notice on this one, I added some bling to it. I'm going to add bling to this one because of where I've got this ink right here. Instead of trying to get it off with an inky or a, yeah, an ink eraser, I'm just going to bring in these little stones. And I think I will put one here at the edge. One in the center. And it just kind of looks like it's going around that G. So see? And now that looks like that little line is there for a purpose. So that is my cards tonight. It's called Faux Baby Wipe. And if you want to get the um, cards or the directions, you can go to my Facebook Live page, which I've lost my little doodah. Let's get this nasty thing out of the way. Um, you could go to my Facebook group and get it. It's um, just go to Facebook and it's Stamp Crazy VIP. And it's a group where I do videos every um, Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. The same video you see here, I do there. But I also, on Tuesday mornings, put this up into the file section to where you can copy it. And I also, if you watch my video live and comment, then I also give my cards away that I make that day. So, like, if this would have been my video on Facebook Live, I would give the two cards away. But without being live on here, I can't do it that way. So, which I'm sorry about. Maybe someday I'll get to do Facebook Lives. I just haven't, I mean, not Facebook, but YouTube Lives. I just haven't ventured out that far yet. I do these videos and then I change them up into a um, video format that I can just upload them to YouTube. So that's all I have for you tonight. If you do like the um, card kit, you can put a message here on, on my YouTube video and I will get back with you. Or you can... Um, if you're on my Facebook group, you can comment there too. So I will let you go and I hope you all have a great night. Thanks. Bye.